Good morning. Good morning, grade seven. How are you this morning? I'm glad that you are all up and ready and perky and ready to go, ready to have class. We are so glad that you have joined us for yet another live English language class. Now, before we begin, I just want to take care of a few in-house matters concerning your phones. Miss Smith is going to assist you. So just in case I'm going too fast or the slides are too wordy and we are not able to stay a long time on the slides, she will assist you by typing the information in the, in the dialogue bar. Another thing that will assist you is if you use your, your phones. This is an iPhone. If you have an iPhone, you can screenshot the information. It means that you can actually see, for example, I open Google and I want to get an image of this screen here. You could actually hold the home, the button right here and this button at the side and click it at the same time. You will get the, the image there. If you have a Samsung, you will do the same. All right, this home key at the bottom, you hold, you hold them together, this one at the bottom here, and this one, you hold them together and you can get the shot. Another thing is that if you're using a laptop, you can always take a picture of what you're seeing on the screen, all right? Or ask someone else, use somebody else's phone and take a picture. All right, now yesterday, we started the wonderful journey of narrative writing and we will be continuing with another aspect of it. We'll soon be putting it together. This morning, what is our topic? What did you see? Yes, you're right. We will be doing imagery or sensory details. Imagery or sensory details. I have two sentences. I am going to be reading those two sentences and I want you to answer the question that follows. The first one is, I went to the store to purchase a tomato. The second one is, I went to the store and selected a red, juicy, and succulent tomato that was almost as big as my fist. Which one? Which one of these tomatoes would you put on your salad? Okay, somebody says number two. Yes, why? Because if I just went to the shop and I selected a tomato, it just sounds like... Uh, this ordinary small tomato. But if I went to the store and I selected a succulent, juicy, and red tomato that is almost as big as my fist, I, you had this in mind. You see how big this one is? Okay, what's the difference? What is the difference? Everybody is saying number two, Daniel, Taran, Tamika, Nathan, Fire Tablet. Okay, yes. Why? Why would you why would you choose number two yes it employs it uses imagery somebody's saying the difference in size and i also use adjectives to enhance the sentences i use succulent red juicy and i also use a simile and so we will embark on our wonderful journey this morning of the imagery i am going to be sharing this screen with you so please focus your attention to this screen. So imagery, what's another, what's another expression for imagery? Sensory details. What image do you see in your mind when you read this sentence? A field of bright yellow flowers lay beautifully in front of me. A field of bright. Yellow flowers lay beautifully in front of me. Is this the image you saw in your mind? Something like this, right? You saw a big field of beautiful, nice yellow flowers. Good. What about this sentence? What image did you see in your mind when you read this sentence? The big, 
juicy burger with its melted cheese and red tomatoes made my mouth water and my stomach grumble. I hope you all had breakfast this morning. Did you see this image? Okay, yes. Imagery, imagery refers to the mental picture that readers experience when reading. Imagery refers to the mental pictures that readers experience when reading. So a while ago, we were reading the sentences and we described the burger as juicy. We described it, the cheese as melting and we saw the red tomatoes, like this big red tomato that I picked from my farm. And so we were able to see, actually see the pictures, the yellow cheese, the juicy burger, okay? And so imagery appeals directly to one or more of the five senses. Imagery or sensory details, that's how we get the word sensory details. Sensory, it appeals to the senses. And we know what our five senses are, right? What are they? Miss Smith, are they typing the senses? Yes, they are. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Writers achieve imagery through the use of words. And you were able to see that big juicy burger with a, before I showed you the picture. Why? Because I said big, juicy. So you could see all that cheese draining at the side of the bread. Yes, that's because of the words that I used. Very good. And so by now, I'm sure that you are finished with this slide. So I will be moving on. So what is imagery, students, or sensory details? Yes, it refers to the mental images, pictures that the readers experience, and they appeal to one or more of your five senses. Okay. So these are the five types of imagery, visual, and that refers to what you see. What about auditory? Auditory, as in oral comprehension, when you are in class and your teacher gives you oral comprehension, A-U-R-A-L, it refers to what you can hear, okay? And what's the next one? Kinesthetic, what you feel, olfactory, what you smell, gustatory, what you taste, okay? We always hear, most of the times, we use visual imagery and you'll hear about auditory imagery, but then the rest will take a little bit of time for you to be able to, to, to probably about a day or two for you to learn the spelling and to remember not to confuse the different types of imagery. Very good. So I think I should be able to move on now. Right, grade seven? Okay. I want you to listen to this song about imagery. Let me hope that your, your internets are working much better this morning so that you can hear the song. Show me what you say. 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 Show
Okay, and so with imagery, you have to use words to show the readers what you are saying. So the first one we are going to be discussing is the oral imagery. It's the use of oral imagery and that has to do with? With herring, with our herring. Let's, let's look at this example. The concert was so loud that her ears rang for days afterward. Do you hear that? Could you hear the concert? Do you hear how loud it is? Yes, because her ears rang for days afterward. And so the words that were used to show, to appeal to oral imagery are loud and also rang, okay? Instead of saying the concert was loud, the word rang indicates or suggests that it was very, very, very loud. Also airs. What about the second one? I could hear the song that she was playing from a distance as the earphones vibrated in her hands. I could hear the song that she was playing from a distance as the earphones vibrated in her hands. What are some of the words that are used here to suggest that oral imagery is being used? Let's hear them. Okay. Hair, that's a, that's a giveaway. It's going to get harder than that. I trust you. Trust me. Airphones. Song that was playing. But what about this one? Vibrated. When something vibrates, when you hear the window shaking or the walls shaking, it means that something is very loud. So let's move on. You could just write oral herring, sorry, oral, then this refers to herring. And then you could just write one example of the sentence because these, these recordings are going to be there for you afterwards. So even tomorrow you could go and review so that you can write the notes that you missed, okay? The next one is visual, visual imagery. And as we said earlier, this refers to the sense of sight, of seeing. The example is, read together with me, let's go. I can't hear you, but you could go ahead. One, two, three. The sunset was the most gorgeous they'd ever seen. The clouds were edged with pink and gold. What words, what words stood out to you? What words suggest that this is employing the visual imagery? Sunset, that's one. What about gorgeous? That's another one. Pink, you could see the brilliant pink and the gold colors. Very good, excellent. The next one is tactile, and this has to do with our sense of touch. You're right. The example is, the tree bark was rough against her skin. You know, we hardly lean against trees because they are so rough. And if we lean on them, we are going to have clothes on. Some of us, especially our girls, we don't like climbing trees. Our boys don't seem to have any problem at all. Okay, and so the word there that suggests that visual, sorry, that the tactile imagery is being used is touch. Next, olfactory. And that has to do with smell, okay? The example is, after eating the curry, his breath reeked of garlic. Now, I know that the word eat is there, and so you probably think that it's the sense of taste. However, the dominant sense that is being appealed to is smell, because the word, the words are, are more dominant. They are more, you see, breath, reeked, garlic. So these words occur, occur more than 
the and also curry because you could also smell that high flavor that high flavor of curry there was only one word there that appealed to the sense of taste and so we have one last one gustatory and i'm going to be allowing you to do this one let's go the familiar tang you could taste that tiny sour taste of grandmother's cranberry sauce reminded him of his youth. That familiar tang of his grandmother's cranberry sauce reminded him of his youth. And this word here that stands out, that suggests that it's the, the um, imagery that is, is the imagery or the sense of taste that is being that is being appealed to is the taste all right do you understand okay are you understanding okay everybody is saying yes ma'am yes ma'am okay okay very good and so this is what we are going to do let me share my screen again we're going to be doing this activity I am going to be reading some sentences. You won't see these sentences, but you are going to listen to them very carefully as I read them. You will answer the following questions by typing the kind of imagery that each sentence uses. You have to wait your turn. It's going to be boys against girls, and we are accepting the first answer. So you may, you may say, how are we going to do this? Well, you are going to be listening to the sentence and you can't type anything until I say the last word. When I say the last word, then the first person to insert the answer is the answer that we'll take. And we are going to be seeing if it's going to be a girl or it's going to be a boy, okay? So let's go. I'm going to be asking about six of them. You are, oh. You are going to say the imagery that is being appealed to, whether it's visual, okay? Whether it's the visual imagery, you could use your, your, your nose to, to assist you, okay? If it's a sense of taste, sense of touch, or so forth, all right? So let's go. Are you ready? The last word is landscape. So don't type anything until I say landscape. Number one, the night was black as ever, but bright stars lit up the sky in a beautiful way, which were sprinkled across the landscape. Okay, the visual, I'm going to take visual. Who was that? That's Aliana. I'd have to scroll up. Okay, you could stop now. You could stop. All of you got it right. I think it was a female. All right. Sorry, that... That was Jabez. That was Jabez. Sorry. So Jabez, Mortimer, are you? That sounds like that. That that's uh, Jabez. Go ahead. That's a, a male, right? Okay. So that's one for the boys. The second one, and this sentence is very interesting because in this example, the experience of the night sky is described with um words with descriptive words it, it's described in depth with color with the color black and as ever okay and the pattern was even shown it said sprinkle and so you see that imagery was used listen to this sentence number two the final word is concert concert Silence was broken by the peal of piano keys as Shannon began practicing her concerts. So that's the sense of? Some of them are not waiting until the end. Okay, you have to wait until the end. Please wait until the end. Miss Smith, did you catch the first person? The first person who waited until the end. Who was that? Andrew. Andrew. Okay, boys, so that's two against what? That's two, two, two nil. All right, boys, you are ahead. Let's go, girls. You have to get this one. Listen to this one. The final word is going to be place. She smelled the scent of sweet hibiscus wafting through the air 
its tropical smell a reminder that she was on vacation in a beautiful place. Denzel. 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 Okay, so that's three. Three. Number four. For number four sentence, the last word is make. Make. The candy melted in her mouth and reminded her of those chewy sweets her grandma used to make. Brooklyn. Russell. Brooklyn. All right. So that's three. One. Okay. All right. Next sentence. Swirls of bittersweet chocolate and slightly sweet but salty caramel blended together on her tongue. Kale, um, I'm not sure if it's, it's K-A-Y-L-E. I think that's a girl. Okay. okay. Are you a girl? Yeah. Type yes. <laughs> okay. So that, that's three, two. Next sentence. The next sentence ends at brow. After the long run, he collapsed in the grass with tired and burning muscles. The grass tickled his skin and sweat cooled on his brow. Jabez Mortimer. Okay, so boys, give your give yourselves yourselves a hand. You go, you won. So that's four, two. Girls, I know you have been answering, but you just have to be a little quicker. Okay, so you have a great understanding of the five different um, kinds of imagery so far, and that is good. So let us get back to the slide. Okay, so please turn your attention to this other activity that will explain more details about sensory details and imagery. Hello, oh, seventh graders, this is Ms. James. Today we're going to be talking about sensory details and how writers use them to improve their writing and make it more vivid. So let's get started. To start with, we need to ask the question, what are sensory details? Well, you might see in the word sensory, our word senses. So sensory details are details relating to the five senses. And these are hearing, sight, touch, smell, and taste. So these are details that authors use in their writing that give a sense to the reader of what it would be like to stand there, to hear, to see, to touch, to smell, and to taste actually what's going on in the story. So why do authors use sensory details? Well, sensory details make the story more interesting. They also help the reader picture the setting. And they help the reader to feel engaged in the story. Again, this is where you really feel like you are standing there. You are in those characters' shoes. And this is the difference between a boring story with not very many details, such as a girl walked her dog, and an exciting story with a lot of details. A frazzled woman with yellow curly hair was pulled drastically by her dog as he ran off towards the distance. So how do you add sensory details to your writing? Well, there's two main ways that we can do this as writers. The first is through descriptive language. Descriptive language is language that describes what's going on. Now we use adjectives and adverbs in our language to add more description. Adjectives are words that describe nouns. So anytime we are describing a place or a person or an idea, we use adjectives. Small, blue, powerful, crazy. These are some examples. Adverbs are words that describe verbs. So anytime an action is happening, an adverb gives us more information about that, adject, that action. So quietly, angrily, timidly, crazily, these are all adverbs describing and giving more details to the actions or verbs that are happening. Now a second way is figurative language. This is language that is adding 
um, description through comparison. So we have two main types of figurative language that we're focusing on just for today. Similes and metaphors. You might be familiar with these words, but oftentimes people get them confused. So pay attention closely here. A simile is a comparison using like or as. So for example, this pizza is as cold as ice. In this comparison, I'm comparing pizza and ice, and you get more description, more rich figurative language here than if I just said, oh, my pizza is cold. Similarly, we have metaphors. Metaphors are comparisons without using like or as. In this case, you say that one thing is the same as another thing, rather than, and so you're comparing them, but you're not saying that they are like each other, you're saying that they are the same thing. For example, Sally was a bear in the mornings. So from this, I know Sally is not a morning person, but more detail is given because we now have this picture of an angry bear who is upset and gruff, and we are picturing Sally as the same thing as this bear, and it gives us a really rich um, picture of what she's like in the mornings. So again, our two main types, um, two main ways of adding sensory details are to include a lot of descriptive language, including adjectives and adverbs as we write, and also to include figurative language, adding similes and metaphors into our writing to give a picture to the reader about what we are talking about. So now you are going to try. Once your notes are complete, you are going to raise a hand and your green lanyard will give you a gummy worm. And you are going to study it carefully and then you are going to record your description of that gummy worm using your five senses. Now, I would highly recommend you take care of the first four senses before you eat the gummy worm and describe its taste because you cannot go backwards. Make sure you are adding in lots of descriptive language, lots of, lots of figurative language, some similes, some metaphors, lots of adjectives and adverbs, and good luck. Okay, so I am going to get back to this slide because afterwards I want to hear your sentences. All right, I, that video, there are... Yes, go ahead. Um, you can repeat the instructions that they, they, they must do at the end about the gummy worms. Okay. I want you to describe the gummy worms using at least two senses, two imagery, two kinds of imagery. So let me go back to the image and I am going to give you about 30 seconds to look at the image. It's, this is Miss James. This is an ad and will give you a... So it's a bunch of gummy worms. So you could look at the color, look at what is on it, look at the amount, and describe it using at least two of your senses, two of your senses that it appeals to, two kinds of imagery. Are they creating a sentence or just listing words? They are creating a sentence. If you want, you could li li write two sentences. And then remember what she says. You could also incorporate a metaphor or a simile. You could also use descriptive language, such as your adjectives and your adverbs. Okay, now let us do a simpler sentence. We're gonna be doing a simpler sentence. I see that a lot of persons are typing their sentences, which is very good. Okay, now I want you to listen to this sentence. Listen to how we can improve this sentence. This is going to be a very short sentence and a very boring sentence, and we are going to be adding imagery to it. Okay, I know it may be sunny on the outside at home, but this is a sentence. It is windy, full stop. It is windy. What we want to do is to extend that sentence. We are going to be using an action. What could the wind be doing? Apart from saying it is windy, how do we know that it is windy? Are the, the leaves shaking? 
Are the trees moving? Are they moving aggressively? So we could say something like, the wind was, how could we describe the movement of the wind as it goes through the branches? We could say something like, the wind was viciously ripping, ripping through the branches. Doesn't that sound better than it was windy? Okay. The wind was so powerful. It sounded like a whistle. That's the best. Okay. I, okay, I see gummy worm sentences are still coming over. It is windy. Somebody says, um, this is Miss McPhee. It is windy because the leaves are flying. This is another one. There was a gust of winds. The leaves, and this is coming from Shermaya Forbes, the leaves were falling off the tree. The dust was flying everywhere. Okay, and so somebody also says, okay, I think I lost that sentence right there. Okay, very good. So you are using similes and you are also using some metaphors. I see some metaphors and your descriptive words are also very good. So I hope that video helped you a whole lot. Let us try this sentence. The leaves were dying. The leaves were dying. Try that one. Let me see some sentences. Let me see you type some sentences. The leaves were dying. Oh, somebody said it is spring. Shama, let us, <laughs> we want a longer one. How do we know that it was spring? Was it the birds or the leaves? The leaves were wrinkled as, okay, you're using that, um, that, that simile, that reference, but I'm sure your grandmother wouldn't appreciate that. <laughs> okay, the leaves were slowly turning sad, brown and dying. Very good. A nice a metaphor there, nice personification the leaves were dying swiftly the leaves markel says the leaves were dying because it wasn't getting enough water the leaves fell from the tree from because of bad weather okay let me see somebody try a simile describe the leaf somebody said a wrinkled what kind of leaves was it the were were the green leaves falling or the brown leaves, or was it the red leaves? Was it the small leaves? So describe the leaves before you add the simile or the metaphor. I love this one. The leaves were dying because of the winter. Okay, I didn't see. Okay, I like that one. What you can do is to add a metaphor or a simile right there. I missed the name, but that was a good sentence. Okay. Let us work with this one, Nathan. The leaves were as brown as the wooden spoon. That's a nice one. But before you say the leaf was as brown, what kind of leaves? Were they large? All right. Were they autumn leaves? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it the spring leaves? So you could say something like the autumn leaves. Let us put a personification in or a metaphor. The autumn leaves were desperately trying to hold on, but they had no chances. Okay, all right. I see many of you are trying. Um, that is good. Julia, I see your sentence. I see Jabez a lot of times. Lakia, all right. The Shantia. Leandra, I see no sentences from you. All right, very good, very good. All right, so let us wrap up. Okay, Demikio, I like this one. The brown and green leaves were riding the wind. Sorry, were riding. Okay, for water, I think you meant something else. Nice, Abigail. The dead leaves were like raindrops. The dead leaves were like raindrops falling to the ground as the autumn arrived. What do you think about that one, Miss Ben? That's a lovely one. That's, a That's lovely an one. awesome one. Yes, awesome. The green spring leaves were slowly swaying back and forth, hanging on to the tree branches. So we see a mixture of um, personification of metaphor 
and she also used an adverb right there slowly and she described the leaves they were green spring leaves and so i like the fact that you're getting your practice with the 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 imagery you're using imagery many of you are using imagery quite well i am very glad to see that okay now finally let us look at this paragraph it says we are going to identify how many kinds of imagery can you find in this paragraph upon entering the grocery store i headed directly okay that's a mistake there i'm sorry but it says i grabbed the flower department where and so that's the sense sent off i spotted yellow tulips correct very good as i tenderly rested the tulips in my rusty shopping cart as i tenderly rested the tulips in my rusty shopping cart how did she know that it was rusty could she have touched it or did she just see it okay that's imagery also i caught a whiff of minty dry eucalyptus that's the sense of I caught a whiff, I caught, sorry, a whiff of minty. How would you know that it's minty? It's because she, correct, she smelled it. So I added the fragrant forest green bouquet of eucalyptus to my chart. That's the sense of sight and also the sense of correct, smell. because she said fragrant, the sense of smell. Go ahead. Ms. Smith, were you saying something? No, I was saying they have it right. Most of the answering, they're, they're doing an excellent job. Okay, excellent. Very good. Yes, that's my smart grade seven. While heading for the meat department, I smell the stench of raw fish, which made my appetite disappear. And so that's the sense of? Correct. I quickly grabbed a bloody bag of snappers and while tossing it into my cart, the icy water cramped my toes. And now feeling is coming into play. How did, how did she know that the water was icy? Yeah, she had to have felt it. And so that's the tactile sense, tactile imagery. Pushing my creaky cart, okay, oral, to the check line, to the checkout line, an employee announced over the PA system, okay, again oral, that there was a special on shrimp. On the way home, I had forgotten to purchase the crusty wheat bread that I liked so much. And it is crusty because it actually felt crusty on her hands. Very good. That's the end. Did you get all of them? Ah, oh, I'm proud of you. Proud of you, grade seven. Now, you, what you are going to do, I have a worksheet for you. We are not going to be completing this worksheet um, in class. However, I want you to download it after class and you will write it in your books. It's not a lot of sentences. It's only 10. And you are going to be enhancing some of these boring sentences. All right, so before we conclude our lesson, I am going to turn your attention to the worksheet. I have to explain it to you first, and then I will conclude our imagery lesson for the day. While I look for the worksheet, I want you to go ahead and type in what you have learned so far in class. So grade seven, when you go back online later, or when you're finished with your other classes, probably at three or four o'clock, download this worksheet. You are going to write the instructions and then complete these. It says, create powerful. And how do we create powerful sentences using imagery? You can add figurative language, such as metaphors and similes to these sentences. You can also add the adjectives and adverbs to them. For example, when the young lady said that the green leaves or the autumn leaves or the summer leaves fell gracefully to the ground, those are examples of adjectives are 
those words that describe movement, they describe verbs, and uh, they mainly, most of, some of them end with L-Y, as the video was explaining. Create powerful image creating sense sentences by taking the boring sentence and adding sensory details. Make up additional details to construct the new sentence. Label the sensory details you added. So a boring sentence would sound something like, it was a cold morning at Arlington High School. Or it was a cold morning at Inagua All Age School or C Sweeting High School. Listen to the new sensory details that you can add. Let us deal with it was a cold morning first. It was a cold morning. So you would say the frigid. What was what does frigid mean? It's an adjective, it's an adjective. But instead of using cold, you are going to find a synonym for the word. And so frigid means cold. The frigid morning air, so instead of saying cold morning, the frigid morning air, so you are already feeling cold. And dense gray fog, that's another element added. Because there was gray fog around, when, when there is fog around, obviously it's cold, right? Yes. So that took care of the, 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 that, those words there, it was a colder morning. So the frigid morning air and dense gray fog did not stop Jane from inhaling the fresh smell of rain from the damp concrete and yelling across the Arlington squad. Sorry, quad. Good morning, Joe. All right. So she added um, dialogue there. She spoke to someone. And uh, the word damp, concrete, and smell of rain also connotes or also show, showed that rain fell. And so usually when rain falls, it would be a cold morning. These are not as long as this one. You don't even have to include dialogue. However, you are going to just try to enhance some of these sentences, just as how we said it was windy, instead of saying it was windy, you could say the wind was viciously ripping through the branches. Okay, so you're going to do that with the, number one, English class is fun, I hope. Number two, the cookies were good, and you will see the other sentences, the other eight sentences when you scroll down. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you are going to go to the ministry's website and um, just as how you log in here and you actually saw the objectives and the topics that we would have covered for the day, you will see the worksheet there. You will also see some of the videos. So you're just going to be clicking on where it says worksheet or the videos. Well, just worksheet. Just click until you see the worksheet that I showed you and you could write it from the laptop. Okay, I am going to double check to see if it's there. It should be there. If not, I am going to ask that it be placed there. All right, so in conclusion, I'm just going to be asking you a couple questions. Let me start with the easiest one. How many kinds of imagery do we have? Okay, I'm seeing 13 responses, 16, 19, 20. Everybody is um, giving their answers, but I can't see. But I assume that they're all correct. Right, Miss Smith? Yeah, yeah, they're doing well. They're all saying five. Okay, very good. Can you list them? What are they? Visual, oral, olfactory, kinesthetic, tactile. Oh, Okay, so it appeals to, they appeal to our sense of taste, smell, touch. They're doing a good job. Okay, very good, very good. And imagery, what is imagery? Let us remind ourselves, ourselves it refers to the mental pictures that we experience when we read and they 
appeal directly to our five senses. You all did a good job. Give yourselves a hand. All right. And so this concludes our class. We will see you again tomorrow. It was a pleasure to have you today. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.